In this video, I'm going to show you my very simple and very effective Google Ads Keyword Planner strategy. So if you want to scale your e-commerce brand profitably to multi six, multi seven, and even multi eight figures with Google Ads, this is exactly how you do it. Now, when it comes to e-commerce brands, regardless of the niche you're in, regardless of the industry you're in, normally you might be using some KPIs if you are a good e-commerce store owner to determine the overall performance of your other KPIs or your other products. But what you or your team members don't know is that the keywords that you actually use for your product, like product titles, descriptions, etc. It's in general also have some KPIs that you need to be looking at to understand whether that keyword you're about to use or want to use is good or not. And this is where so many brands go wrong. I mean, I'm seeing this often nowadays where brands are not able to scale to the levels they want to, and they play around by clicking buttons within their ad accounts. They play around by adding products, removing products, thinking that's the problem. But the real problem is much deeper than that. It's within the foundations of their brand because you need to keep in mind every single search keyword out there has a specific KPI or a list of KPIs, which it needs to match in order to de be determined if it's a good keyword to even use on your landing page or not. So let's go over the KPIs first and foremost, which I keep in mind when doing my keyword analysis and my keyword strategy. Now, there's three different things you want to understand. First a thing you need to understand is a single individual keyword if it's considered a good keyword it should have a minimum of 30,000 or more average monthly searches for that given product because if nobody is searching for your product it's not going to sell period I mean it could be a spaceship that takes people to Mars and even if you sell it for absolutely free zero dollars nobody's searching for it it's just not gonna sell you need to keep in mind that a minimum of 30,000 average monthly searches as a whole is a good starting point but that's not the only thing you need to understand you need to check to see what the year over year change is for the, those given keywords whether it's going upwards or it's steady or it's stable the chart that you see at the very top of your google keyword planner tool is a, exactly what this means it's going to tell you a lot of information and what this essentially means is that there's only two ways to go about that chart at the top either it's neutral meaning it's steady it doesn't have too many ups or downs or it's going up that's what you want to see with any types of keywords you're targeting with your products otherwise if it's negative or if it's going down specifically that's not a good sign at all but the third thing you need to understand is the overall competitor prices are around the ballpark for what you would like to sell the products at so for instance if you are searching for any given keyword and you find out that one of the major keywords let's say it's 3d printer it's a good keyword and then you search that keyword up to understand what your competitors are doing and what you see is a bunch of the products appearing there are only $50 or $100 but you're trying to sell it for $500 to $1,000 then that keyword itself it's probably not a good idea to have that within your product titles or images because that leaves you with no room to come in to kind of sell that product and grow the business as a result so in this situation if it were up to my strategy I would most likely omit that keyword no matter how big it is just because it's not going to do me anything and it's not going to really help me at all but once you have these three things in mind that's when we can now approach the keyword planner tool itself and understand the different types of approaches to be using the keyword planner tool in 2024 and onwards and there's actually two different approaches I usually like to go with let's go over the first one so the first approach is to start with the keyword approach meaning where you get a general idea of what your product is what you're trying to sell and then search one to three major keywords within the keyword planner tool which describes your product so if you're trying to sell 3d printers obviously one of the main keywords you would search up within the planner tool is 3d printer you could also do things such as best 3d printer or buy 3d printer or 3d printer for sale the main thing you need to understand with this approach is the broader the keywords are the better it is so again it's about getting broad ideas which you can then use within descriptions titles so on and so forth so go broad and then once you find the ideal keywords from that broad list then you can start going in there now the second approach is by starting with a website directly so if you already have a brand right here but you have no idea how to start with the keywords because 
you don't know what the right keyword should be or you're not able to find broad keywords in this situation what you need to do is you just need to use the website url within the keyword planner tool to find the keyword so for example let's say prusa3d.com is my website what i would do is i would go into the keyword planner tool and i would just write the main url to use within the keyword planner tool there's a section within the keyword planner tool which lets you do just that just copy the url and paste it of the home page or Second option, you can use any given page. Maybe it's a singular product page. Maybe it's for a specific model of that 3D printer or something you sell. Maybe it's not even 3D printer. Maybe it's a different like complementary product. Well, in that situation, just copy that URL and paste it within the keyword planner tool within the second option. And that should give you a lot of different things because you need to understand Google's algorithm has already understood what you sell and you're targeting the entire website or an individual URL, which means you will probably get the right keywords from the get go. So then you'll start seeing 3D printers or 3D printer related keywords coming up. And then you can see what the average monthly searches are. In this situation, it's roughly 550,000 as a total, as a whole. But this now takes us directly to the different types of KPIs and metrics, which you need to understand when analyzing all of these things, when analyzing the keywords. Let's understand it in a bit of a better detail. So again, there were three different metrics which we looked at. Let's start with the first one, which is the total keyword search volume. As I mentioned earlier, in total, the bare bare minimum should be at least 30,000 and this chart at the top when you search something up within the keyword planner tool it should give you a general idea of what the keyword search volume is per month you want it to be a minimum of 30,000 in this situation in this example it's 1.5 million so this means that product with 1.5 million monthly keyword search volume it's good enough for google once you do that next thing you need to understand is what month and what time period are you trying to sell that product within so last for example in 2022 if march and april may and june had 1.4 to 1.5 million but then june it dropped down what we understand is number one it, the lowest point is above 30,000, which is exactly what we want but number two it's consistent because keep in mind you want it to be either stable or you want it to be going up you don't want it to be a situation where there's a massive drop downwards and it just keeps going lower and lower in this situation it's common to have some months where it's much less search volume that's fine but if it's way too low for example if this was 1.4 million and this was 500,000, that's a little bit of a concerning thing to keep in mind but let's say on the opposite side that the metric here was not 1.4 million it was like 28,000, which is below 30,000. that means number one the website that you searched up is not sufficient for you to do the research with your keyword planner strategy or number two if you keep doing searches and it's still below thirty thousand, then that niche in general or the keywords related to that product in general are not ideal for google ads purposes and it might be better to advertise that product elsewhere because if you consistently try different keywords try different variations searching them up try different urls and it's still not leading anywhere then that's probably a product issue or a niche issue so you need to keep that in mind and not get too carried away trying to make a product work but this brings us now to the second metric which is the year over year change now you don't necessarily need to look at the three month change because i personally believe three months is a bit too small to determine a lot of things but year over year it should either be a positive change or an individual keyword level meaning the the search volume is growing or it should be zero percent which means it's essentially neutral if you look and it says something like this year over year change it's like minus 18 percent that means it's really not performing that well potentially it's starting to go down and you can change the time period from 12 months to 24 months to get a better idea as well because some months yes it's going to be down some months yes it's going to be up but overall if it's consistently going down in terms of the trend for an individual keyword or multiple keywords as a whole that simply might mean that you're in a downward trend for that product or that niche in general because if you look right here if it's going up later on within a month like for example 3d printers they go back up in october but right now it's one of the low seasons then ideally you don't want to even use that keyword within your product titles or descriptions because right now if the trend of that keyword is downwards you don't want to be utilizing that keyword in a downward trend because most likely it's not going to get you the results that you want it's going to waste a lot of valuable space within your product titles and descriptions and you would rather have keywords which are at least stable right now or going up 
Now, a lot of niches are seasonal. So if you see one keyword going down, a lot of the times the other keywords associated with that will also be going down. And that's just kind of the unfortunate thing with Google. Some of them are seasonal, some stay down for long periods of time, but you just have to go with the flow and focus on finding keywords which are at least stable. That's the kind of the worst case scenario if your niche is in a downward trend at the moment. But that brings us to the final metric, the third metric, which is competitor prizes. Now, once you finally find a keyword that works, because yes, it is a strategy, it is an approach, which by the way, if you run a brand doing a million dollars a year and you would rather have somebody help you with this, as well as scale your brand to the next level with Google, go onto my website at yourmarketing.com and schedule a free call with me to see essentially how we can work together and make that happen. But once you finally find that golden keyword or those set of golden keywords, which are matching the criteria which are working, then now you need to look at the competitor pricing. So in this situation, let's say we're selling this model of a 3D printer, it's called the Slicer Prusa, basically a model, a 3D printer model. We wanna go over on a website called iSearchFrom.com and enter the keyword in, because that is going to give you the ability to let you do a search without your IP address influencing the search results, which is exactly what we want. We want it to be completely random, but look at the competitor's pricing and try to understand what the average pricing is. Because if you, if for example, if I were trying to sell this Prusa Slicer product for $5,000, obviously the keyword that I'm searching up is not an ideal keyword because if that exact same product is getting sold for 1100 euro, $1,100 or 1,100 euros or 900 euros, so on and so forth. So you need to make sure to go down the list of keywords to look at your competitors to understand what is their right price. Because after you have implemented this keyword strategy, the next step is to inc incorporate all of these findings within your landing pages. And that's when the keyword strategy is really applied. The keyword approach is really finalized because otherwise, if you just leave out one of these kind of approaches, if you leave out one of these kind of steps, then what's going to happen is you're going to have an incomplete keyword strategy and incomplete keyword approach. And that's not going to be the most effective for your brand long term. But again, if you run a brand doing a million dollars a year, you need a little bit of extra help scaling your brand to the next level. Go onto my website at yourmarketing.com and schedule a free call with me to see essentially how we can work together and make that happen. But check out this video right here on a brand we scaled to multi seven figures recently using this keyword planner strategy.